Hi, I'm Grant, this is Dad Crafted, and this is my basement workbench desk build. All right, let's go. We recently moved and the new house has a nice big basement area that I want to transform into my workshop, or at least my second workshop. But anyway, I wanted to make this my own and kind of start by building my own workbench from scratch that will meet all the needs that I have. Laser, 3D printer, supplies, junk, more junk. And that's right, because pretty soon I'll be shooting things with a freaking laser beam. Freaking laser beam! Yes, I got a Glowforge. About to get real here. You watch your language. Anyway, I started by drawing everything out on paper. But I'm terrible at drawing things in 3D, and I'm even worse when it comes to making sure the proportions are correct how they would be in the real world. So I wanted to try some 3D modeling. Now I knew next to nothing about 3D modeling in Fusion 360, but lucky for me, Bob from I Like to Make Stuff has an online course called Fusion 360 for Makers. Yes, it comes with a small price tag, but to me it was worth it to get the attention to detail and the breakdown of videos by subject. Modeling this thing in 3D allowed me to see it in a way the paper just can't, and it allowed me to see all the joinery and measurements, and make updates if I didn't like the way things looked, which happened more than once. I used parametric modeling to help with this, which is me basically telling the software certain parameters that I know I wanted, such as my material thickness equals three quarters of an inch. And I knew I wanted the total height to be three feet, the total width to be six feet, and the tabletop depth to be 30 inches. Plus, the software is just really cool. You can view your model from basically any angle, and since I built the different sections of the desk as separate bodies, I'm able to hide those from view and hone in on any particular section I need to work on. You can also use the measuring tool to get precise measurements from any two lines or points on the model. There are a ton of other features I use, and really too many to go through here, but if you want to get into 3D modeling, take it from this noob that Bob's course and Fusion 360 are a pretty good route to go. I used cutlistoptimizer.com to figure out how to make a cut list. You're able to enter in all of your measurements on the upper left panel and the quantity, and then you enter in your stock, so in my case, three sheets of plywood. 96 by 48 inches. The software will tell you if any pieces are unable to fit. I kept having issues getting all 25 pieces to fit on three sheets of plywood, but lucky for me, Lowe's sells oversized 8 foot by 4 foot sheets. They're actually a half inch bigger on each side. Enter that in, and voila! Now I know where all my cuts need to be, and I won't have to run back to Lowe's to get another $80 sheet of plywood. Alright, enough with the talk. Let's get on with the build. My tool of choice for most of the cutting, the circular saw. I just find trying to cut down these full sheets of plywood by myself a little bit too challenging to do on the table saw. I mark where my cuts are going to go and then I use blue painters tape to cover the line. I'm using tape here so that I can reduce the fraying because usually when I make these cuts with my circular saw, the plywood will fray and chip apart like crazy. And the tape really does a good job preventing that. Once the tape's down, then I remeasure and I put the actual cut line. I use an offset block that I made that matches the distance from the inside of the saw blade to the outside of the saw's guard. And then I just clamp down a half inch piece of OSB right to the board. And the offset block has the distance from my cut line to the edge of that half inch piece of wood. Just as good as a track saw. Peel back the tape to reveal a nice clean cut. Clean lines. And then it's time for a cut montage because it's three whole sheets of plywood. When the pieces did get small enough to manage, I did break out the table saw. kids ask you to play video games, just go play video games. Yes. Alright, now that everything's cut, it's time for assembly prep and a bunch of sanding. Yay. Sanding. For assembly, the shelves and the printer shelf 
all are going to be dados. So I'm gonna sand those shelves and get them out of the way. And then I'm gonna do the dado cuts and side panels. And for the rest of the assembly, I'm gonna be using a Craig jig and pocket holes. Before anyone makes fun of me for using pocket holes, I'm just gonna say, this is not really a fine woodworking channel. I make toys for my kids, myself, mostly myself. On to the dados. There's a bunch of different ways you can do dados. You can use a table saw, a dado stack and a table saw, a router table. I'm using a palm router. Then I just mark the lines that I'm gonna route out and then I make another line for where I'm gonna put my piece of scrap wood that I'll clamp down that my guard of my router can run against so I can route the straight line. And there's the shop doodle. Since I only had a half inch router bit, I had to do two passes to make a three quarter inch dado. That way my three quarter inch plywood will fit inside nicely. After I did the first one, I test fit a piece and we were good to go. But yeah, then I just repeat that a whole bunch of times. that one. What do you do? Good enough for me. Woo! It's a lot of sawdust. It's a lot of wood pieces. I almost forgot, uh, I need to do pocket holes with the Craig jig on the top of each of the panels. I'm doing that so that I can attach the workbench top to all the panels by screwing up through these. Since it's a basement workbench, everything had to be carried downstairs for assembly. So, I'm not really sure how to tackle this monster, but I think the best way is to probably try and assemble it, lay it on its back, um, start with the shelf section, and then from there I've got the stringers, and then I cut a couple, cut some of these extra pieces, pieces? I cut some of these extra pieces to uh, act as kind of spacers where along the top of the workbench, where that's all doesn't really have a piece, but I need, I don't want it to all fold in when I try and screw everything together. So I'm just going to start and see how bad I can screw this up. I chose to use screws to attach the shelves because both sections outside of the shelf section actually will house drawers and these screw holes won't be visible. Then I attached my stringers via the pocket holes and quickly realized I needed a new game plan. Okay, so I've reached the point where I realize how heavy this thing's gonna be, and I can't really flip this up easily on my own. So, I think I'm gonna take the spacers that I made, and I'm actually gonna pocket hole those, and I'll actually screw them in place, just so the whole thing won't tilt and fall apart when I try to flip it up to put the top on. Time to put on the top, but always beware of a random clamp attack. Yeah! Oh! Yeah! Oh! Yeah! That's Boys, I need you. Come here. What do you need? 
put your weight here. Ready? I hope this doesn't go up in your butt. Can I go? No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You're good. You're good. Thank you. Stay out, people! With the cabinet assembled, it was time to build drawers. So that meant go back outside and rip down some half inch and quarter inch plywood. I just got too excited about doing that and forgot that I was supposed to sand these before I assembled, so back to sanding. There are a ton of different ways to do drawers. I chose to just do some pocket holes and butt joints. And then for the bottoms, I'll just use some wood glue and brad nails. These drawers are pretty shallow, so I don't plan on putting a ton of heavy stuff in there that could cause them to fail. These are the parts for the skinny shelf, or at least most of the parts. I got pocket holes on this, and on the back of this, because my friends call me pocket hole. To the shelves for the long skinny drawer, first I lined up everything with the tape measure, then I cut a bunch of small little blocks that the shelves could rest on. Lined everything up and used wood glue and brad nails to secure them in place. And then more wood glue and more brad nails to put the shelves on. everything fully assembled, it was time to get it all painted. Installing drawers is not my favorite pastime, but it's just a lot of measuring, hopefully precise measuring, and then screwing things into place. One recommendation I would have is don't buy the cheapest drawer slides that you can find on Amazon. Maybe spend a few extra dollars. You'll see why in a second. Alright, moment of truth. Oh. not what you want. <laughs> I 
I use little spacers that are 1 8 inch thick that I cut down on the bandsaw. Almost done, but my hatred for drawers returns with a vengeance. Nope. Uh. <gasps> ah! Now we just gotta attach it to that. I don't know how we're gonna see. Flashlight. So. So, two of the Amazon drawers have failed me. Slides, that is. So, we're going to swap that one out and put in a new one. This isn't my first time I've ever built shop furniture before. This is the first time that I've actually made it on a piece of paper and then transferred that to a digital model and then made it an actual physical thing. Like brain, paper, computer, in the real world. I made this thing to totally fit my needs. Uh, I've got this big open section that'll fit my 3D printer really easily. I've got this section for small parts bins. I've got this for storage for scraps of plywood or even small parts containers. And then I've got five drawers for, you know, probably random junk. And then I have a six foot by 30 inch work section on the top, most of which is going to be taken up by my Glowforge soon. Speaking of Glowforge, I'm stopping the video here with this kind of boring-ish gray looking color because I'm ready to put the Glowforge to work. And specifically, I'm going to be making pieces on the Glowforge that I can attach to this to make this look like it came out of Star Wars. That's kind of what I do. This is the way. I mean, the world just doesn't need another boring piece of birch stained plywood shop furniture, does it? No, God, please, no, 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 no! Not when I can make this look like it came from a rebel base on Yavin 4. One other thing, there will be a Glowforge here soon. I would like you guys to help me name it. If you can think of any cool, clever names for my new laser, maybe Star Wars related, post them in the comments below. If I happen to pick yours, maybe I'll send you some cool swag. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the next one.